introducing the FLT-L16, a comprehensive fault monitoring solution designed to enhance operational efficiency and minimize downtime in your critical systems. In this video, we'll take a closer look at its features, specifications, installation, applications, connection, and settings. Start with features. For a seamless user experience, FLTL16 features a user-friendly touchscreen interface and password protection for added security. This advanced unit boasts 16 digital fault inputs. Each detected fault is meticulously documented with timestamps and user-defined messages, ensuring clear and precise identification of issues. The FLTL16 seamlessly supports RS-485 Mobbus communication. In critical situations, the two built-in relays can trigger an audio alarm or initiate a controlled machine shutdown. The system retains the last five faults with timestamps. FLTL16 integrates with an IIoT web application, providing remote access to comprehensive data and enhanced control. Input specifications. It has 16 digital fault input. The FLTL16 accepting both normally open and normally closed contact inputs for adaptation to diverse applications. Display. The user-friendly interface features a crystal-clear 320 by 240 pixel touchscreen display. Output specification. The two onboard relays provide flexible control options. One relay is dedicated to triggering audio alarms for immediate notification, while the other can be configured to initiate controlled machine shutdowns as needed. Two type of relay normally open and normally close. Rated for 5 amperes at 230 volt AC or 30 volt DC. Additionally, the RS-485 Modbus output ensures seamless integration with your existing communication infrastructure. Auxiliary Supply The device can operate on a wide range of AC or DC voltages, from 100 volts up to 270 volts. Its power consumption is minimal, with a volt ampere rating of approximately 6 VA. Environment Condition It has environment condition, with an operating temperature range of 0 to 55 degrees Celsius, withstands humidity levels up to 95%. For applications requiring additional protection against dust and moisture, it features an IP65 protection level at front side. Applications Process Industries Thermal Power Plant Industrial Automation Panel Building Management System HVAC system, data center, server rooms, corporate buildings, fire and safety panels, mechanical installation, Outline dimension, measuring only 96 mm in height, 96 mm in width, and 52 mm in depth. Panel cutout dimension, prepare the 92 mm by 92 mm panel cutout, fit the unit into the panel using the provided clamp. Terminal connection, our device operates with an auxiliary power supply ranging from 100 to 270 volts AC or DC. Start by connecting the main line to terminal 1 and the neutral to terminal 2. This forms the foundation for our electrical setup. Now, let's establish connections from the main line to the common terminals, which are C1 of relay 1 and C2 of relay 2. This ensures a streamlined power flow to our relays. For audible alerts, connect the hooters line to terminal N01 of relay 1. The neutral connection splits, one end is linked to the main neutral, while the other connects to the output load. This setup enables efficient hooter operation and manages the distribution of power to the load. Speaking of the output load, its line connection is secured to NO2 of Relay 2. This careful arrangement guarantees optimal performance and safety in powering external devices. Now, let's focus on fault handling. The switches from F1 to F16, representing faults 1 through 16, are connected to the common terminal comp. For manually controlling the faults, terminals 20, 21, and 22 provide switches to operate test reset and mute options. This hands-on approach enhances the flexibility and responsiveness of the system, allowing for quick adjustments and troubleshooting. Lastly, we have terminals D plus and D minus dedicated to Modbus connection. This facilitates seamless communication and data exchange, enhancing the overall functionality and monitoring capabilities of the electrical panel. General Settings how to configure and manage FLT L16 fault enunciator settings. 
There is four display on your front screen that show fault name and fault number. In every 10 seconds it's scroll. Firstly, when you enter the main menu, you'll see three different options. Let's start with fault configuration. Number of fault selection is for customized selection of displaying fault numbers 1 to 16. If, for instance, you only want to monitor 10 faults, type 10 and press enter. Next, fault type. There is two type, choose between NO normally open and NC normally closed fault types based on your switch type. For NO type, the fault will be indicated when the switch is open, while NC type indicates a fault when the switch is closed. Once configured, your front screen will show the selected faults and their status. Now, let's explore fault history. This feature allows you to review past faults of 1 to 16. Let's check F1. I set F1 to my parameter named Ampere. You can see one fault details in this. As it is you can see a list of previous faults in F2. You can check when a fault occurred. Like in February 10th, 2024 last fault was occurred and view details such as its time and total number of faults. Next, if you want to define a specific fault, simply click on the fault number which you want to define and you can enter a custom definition like I type water. This way, you can easily identify and categorize faults for future reference. Next, there is last fault history. The last five faults will appear in the last fault history. Now moving on to profile settings, first it asks for password to enter. Your default password is 25. Once inside, you can customize your company name, your address, your contact details, and preview shows how your profile will be displayed. If you wish to change your password for security reasons, navigate to password security, click on change password, enter the current password, then enter new password and set a new one. Remember to confirm the changes to ensure your account's security. Let's enter the new password and check. It should open. In the settings menu, you'll find the RTC settings where you can set the real-time clock and date. Adjust the date, month, year, hours, minutes, and seconds as needed. As an example, if I replace 11 hours with 12 hours, it will change. Explore the Modbus settings where you can set the address at range of 1 to 127. Set baud rate with down key as your preferences, set parity in none or even or odd, and stop bit with bit 1 or bit 2. Display profile selection is for customize the display as theme 1 or theme 2. Let's select theme 1, now check the front display, which will look like this. Now go back to settings. If you want to clear old fault history, there is reset fault history option. Enter the password. Now select the specific fault which you want to clear history, let's choose F1 then enter and click yes. Now if we check F1 in the fault-wise history, its history is cleared. In this way, you can clear the history of all your faults by clicking on the select all option. Now, when a fault occurs and the indicator is on, here's what you need to do. When a fault, such as the first one, occurs, the display screen will flicker, turn red, and an alarm will sound. To mute the alarm, long press on the fault, and you will get three options, including the mute option. Clicking on the mute option will mute the alarm. If the fault is resolved, the screen will turn green along with turning off the alarm. If the fault persists, the screen will remain red, indicating that the fault is yet to be resolved. Now, if the fault is resolved, you can reset it by clicking on the reset option and the green screen will return to a healthy condition. The test option is for manual testing purposes, checking if all faults are working correctly. For mute this same long press and click mute and back to healthy condition by reset. And one more thing, if multiple faults are there, and you mute them, then some of them are not solved will be shown in red, while the solved ones will be shown in green. If you try to reset solved faults back to a healthy condition it cannot be done. So once all faults are solved, then you can reset and put the screen back to a healthy condition. This means that you can reset the screen to a healthy condition only after solving all faults. So, these are the all details of FLTL16 that we are showing through this video. For any queries, contact our sales team via call or mail. Visit our website to know more about our products. Thank you.